Welcome to Where Her Heart Speaks, a show designed to challenge and disrupt ineffective thoughts and behaviors to help you not only embody peace, joy, calm, and certainty, but also to help you live the life you've always dreamed of living. Where Her Heart Speaks with Coach Catherine begins now. Jim Rohn said, You must take personal responsibility. You cannot change the circumstances, the seasons, or the wind, but you can change yourself. That is something you have charge of. Welcome and welcome back. I'm Katherine James, international speaker, best-selling author, trauma-informed coach, and your host for this show, Where Her Heart Speaks. In the prior episode titled Resolution, Dreams, and Expansion, I shared how expansion is necessary to attain dreams. What I realized after that episode is that although the thought of increase can be exciting based on the potential outcome, the process most times is not at all exciting. Why? Because expansion requires something from us. So this week, I want to talk to you about what expansion requires to help you cruise through your expansion period. Expansion is the art of changing yourself. And even though it's something we have charge over, as Jim Rohn says, Far too few people are willing to take the journey. I'm often curious and often wonder why that is. I've come to the conclusion that I reached just last week. (laughs) It's because expansion has requirements. So let's dive into the requirements of expansion. I want to say the first requirement is vision. Expansion requires you to have vision. I can remember all the way back to the age of six when my vision was clear to me. At the age of six, each Sunday before we went to church, I remember I would get up, get on my Sunday, Sunday's best, (laughs) whatever dress I was wearing, black patent leather shoes, I would have my hair finished. And as I was waiting for my mom to get ready or for our ride to pick us up, I would go and get in the middle of my brother's bed. And it was always my brother's bed because His dresser, which sat directly across from his bed, had a mirror that was large enough to capture my entire silhouette. So I would stand in the middle of his bed, this little frilly dress on, little white socks, bobby socks folded down with the ruffles and some patent leather shoes. And I would imagine that I was standing on the stage and ministering to thousands of people in my my little head. I was in an auditorium and that auditorium was full of people who had come to hear me sing. (laughs) Now, the funny thing is, I believe that I was singing because that was the only thing that I could connect to. I didn't know of speakers back then. I didn't know that people use their voice to actually change the lives or help others change their lives. So in my mind, this six-year-old little girl would stand on this stage and perform in front of thousands of people. That was my vision. I knew way back then that my purpose was to impact thousands of individuals with my voice. The book that I live by says, write the vision, make it plain. Though it may tarry, it will surely come. 
Another passage says, my people perish because they lack vision. So I ask you, what is your vision? What is your vision? Not the vision your parents had for your life or the vision they had for their life (laughs) through your life. (laughs) Not that vision, not the vision developed based on propaganda, not that vision, not the vision your friends may have applauded you for, not that vision. What's your vision? If you're like many of my clients, you may not be able to answer this question in this moment. And that's okay. Because somewhere along the line in my life, I remember losing sight of my vision. And had someone asked me what was my vision, I wouldn't have been able to answer that question. Even though my six-year-old self could have clearly told you her vision, my adult self, at some point in my life, I had lost sight and I wouldn't have been able to answer that question. My invitation to you is to set aside some time to really sit with that question. Ask yourself, explore, dissect, go deep, and find your answer. What is your vision? The next thing I believe expansion requires of us is commitment. As I talked in the last episode, according to statistics, a large number of resolutions, New Year's resolutions are quit by the end of January, a high percentage. Most times when we start out or people start out with these New Year's resolutions, they have vision. They know where they want to go. They know what they desire, but they have no commitment. If we stop for a moment and think about what commitment means. Commitment is an unwavering dedication. Commitment is a perseverance. Commitment is having a willingness to overcome obstacles. So when we think about New Year's resolutions, often people jump into them with excitement and a desire for change, but no commitment. They have no desire to stay in it, to have that unwavering dedication. There's no desire to have that long-term persistence. There's no desire to overcome the obstacles that will be faced along the way. Martina Navatilova says, the difference between involvement and commitment is like ham and eggs. She said, the chicken is involved, but the pig is committed. (laughs) I'm going to give you a moment to think about it. The chicken is involved, but the pig is committed. Unwavering dedication, perseverance, and a willingness to overcome obstacles. As I think about my own life and the areas where I've really demonstrated commitment, I am reminded of my own story in terms of how long it took me to attain my first college degree. It took me 29 years to get my first degree. 29 years and four attempts, mind you. (laughs) I I went to college right after high school. I needed money, needed to get a job, wanted to be self-sufficient out of my mom's house. And I dropped out to get a job. I returned to college 11 years later. 
now married with two small children and working. And before long, I realized that was too much and I dropped out. 10 years later, now third time around, I re-enroll and I dropped out. Now another four years later, I re-enroll, I return to college and I completed my courses and obtained my degree on March 28th, 2016 my first degree, 29 years it would take me to get that first degree. And as I think about my business, that journey, my journey has been very similar. People often ask me what made me leave my corporate job to start my business. And my reply is they're thinking that I just did this. My first time was back in 2020, but I would reply and tell them I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it since I first received my my coaching certification back in 2008. I had been thinking about it and so much that I had left my corporate job twice before this last time. So I actually left three times. (laughs) The first time I had to go back. I didn't have enough business acumen. I didn't know how to separate the corporate me and become the entrepreneur that was necessary to sustain, to build and sustain a business. So I had to go back. Second time, same thing. The third time I had a little bit of information, I I had a little bit of experience under my belt and much more self-confidence. So commitment, commitment is about staying in it, being able to deal with the ups and downs, the highs and lows, deciding that you are going to see this thing through. You are so dedicated that you're going to see it through until you get to your end, whatever your end looks like. I want to encourage you to stay committed to your commitment. Stay committed to your commitment. As we are considering and and walking through what or, or the requirements, walking through the requirements of expansion. The first requirement, identify your vision. The second requirement, have a level of commitment or be committed. The third requirement, Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. Expansion requires you to get out of your comfort zone. Most of us know that any type of change will require us to leave our comfort zone. We know this, but we can't do it. Maya Angelou said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. I love Maya Angelou. (laughs) And a couple of years ago, I was being interviewed on a Facebook Live. I was talking about how the nervous system keeps us safe. And I remember I said, out of nowhere, it just kind of like blurted out, this is why you can't always do better even when you know better. Let me tell you, <laughs> in that moment, I was shocked because I had grown up all of my life, like many of you hearing, when you know better, you're supposed to do better. And I had struggled sometimes at some points in my life because cognitively, I knew better 
but my actions were not mirroring that which I knew. Cognitively, I knew better, but I was not doing better. And I couldn't understand why. And I began to talk to others. I began to coach and talk to clients. And I saw this thread where there were a number of women that I interacted with who knew better cognitively, intellectually from a headspace. They knew better but they weren't doing better. And we joke about it all the time. Like we know how to lose weight. And yet the number one resolution every single year is to lose weight. We could tell our friends how to find Mr. Right and somehow find ourselves with Mr. Wrong. Like we know better, but we don't do better. We can teach our children how to have emotional stability and yet still fly off the handle when someone pushes our buttons. We know better, but we don't do better. Why is that? I could not understand. And I began to think, if this saying is true, if I know better and I'm not doing better, then something must be wrong with me. And that could be no, that, I'm going to (laughs) say that is the furthest from the truth because we know better, but don't do better does not mean that something is wrong with us. And I'm again, I, I again, am going to say, I absolutely love and respect and adore Maya Angelou. Like she had a level of wisdom that was ahead of its time and life-changing. I had to sit with this statement. I had to sit with this discord. And it wasn't until I began to study and understand the nervous system that it, be, it, it made sense to me why it was possible to know better and not do better. Having an even greater understanding of the autonomic nervous system. Today, I can say with certainty that knowing better does not always equate to doing better. In fact, <laughs> I have recently started playing with the acronym for autonomic nervous system, ANS, and saying that it not only stands for autonomic nervous system, but it also stands for automatic not system. (laughs) Because when the nervous system feels unsafe, it's going to stop you. Leaving your comfort zone can create a feeling of uncertainty and instability. The nervous system finds safety in familiar habits and routines, and it likes predictability, and it aims to ensure you stay in line. It aims to ensure you're going to continue with your normal routines, because that's familiar or your normal habits, that's familiar. The nervous system perceives change as a potential threat to its existing state. That means it no longer feels safe. And when it doesn't feel safe, it creates a stress response. When that stress response shows up, (laughs) I believe this is when the automatic not system is activated. You want to return to school. You're confident that you can do it, but you don't take action. The automatic not system shows up. 
You want to go out and get another job. You're no longer happy in the situation you're in. But going out to get another job, the process of interviewing and finding a job is unfamiliar. That creates this feeling of discord. It feels as though you're not safe. The automatic not system is activated. So ways to tell when your automatic not system is activated is you'll experience resistance. You cling to old thinking. You cling to old behaviors and beliefs. You can find yourself in conversations with people and arguing for something that you may not really believe. Yeah, this is what causes conflict. This is what causes conflict in relationships. This is what causes conflict in the workplace. This is what causes conflict in our government. This is why countries go to war. This is what keeps us where we are, despite our knowing better. Yeah. The autonomic nervous system is designed to keep us safe. The automatic not system will keep us where the nervous system thinks we should remain to be safe. The last point I want to give you regarding the requirements of expansion is expansion requires presence and letting go. One of the most impactful books I've read was titled Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender by David R. Hawkins. It helped me to gain a better understanding of letting go. And as I was going through that book, I also came to appreciate the benefits of letting go. <laughs> I, I realized how tightly I had held on to some things. How tightly I had held on to some beliefs and some opinions that were no longer serving me. And I would offer that you just imagine what it would be like, what it may feel like to be unattached. Imagine what it might feel like to hold your opinion, but not feel the need to prove your opinion. Imagine being able to appreciate and not adopt the views of others, to be considerate and not conform to other people's ways of existing. Imagine how different your life would be if you let go. I found in my own life, as I work with hundreds of women, that a lot of the stress we experience is a result of our refusal to let go. This past Christmas, I received a gift and it was a sweatshirt. On the front of the sweatshirt, it read, it is what it is. It is what it is. And I love it. I laughed about it. Um, the 
person who gave it to me says, this is you. This is, you always say it is what it is. This is so you. And so I had to get it for you. I believe that is letting go. Now, some may think there's this kind of maybe I don't care attitude underneath that saying. And for some people, maybe that's true. But for me, it has to do with being intentional. Being intentional intentional about what I, I give my energy to. Expending time, energy, mind, emotions, and other resources only on things I can control. So when I say it is what it is, I have come to a place of realizing that that situation, that person's behavior, attitude, or opinion is outside of my control. Contrary to popular belief, (laughs) we can't control other people. We can only control ourselves. So when I see something and I realize that it's outside of my control and I don't feel the need to expend energy, my time, my energy, my resources, I sit back and say, it is what it is. Saving myself so much stress. (laughs) I'd invite you to try it. Do the same. (laughs) Save yourself. Know what you can control. Know what you can control. When we think of presence, presence is being aware of and accepting what's in the here and now. Being focused, being attentive and engaged in the moment. Times when we are or when we find ourselves unhappy or find ourselves uh, discontent. We're often focused on something that happened in the past or worried about something that's going to happen in the future. But when we sit in the present, all that we can focus on, it's what's in front of us, what's in the here and now, what feelings are in the here and now, what emotions are in the here and now, what people are in the here and now, what circumstances or situations are in the here and now. We don't have to be consumed with all of the other things that are going on. I remember years ago, multitasking was a big thing. Now science is saying multitasking is really not that good. But when you focus on one thing and one thing only, you're much more productive and often you will yield a better product or outcome. So presence, being present. And really quickly, what I I would invite you to do is experience presence. Hear my voice. And as you're listening to my voice, draw your attention to your breath. And just notice the pattern of your breath. Not to make it mean anything, not to make it right or wrong. Just notice. And as you're noticing your breath, connect with your felt sense. What are you feeling in your body? What sensations might you be feeling? Just scan your body from the top of your head all the way down to your toes. And now I want to invite you to return your attention to your breath. And notice how you're feeling in the moment. Just being present. Being present, noticing what is, 
not making anything right or wrong, accepting. It just is. Expansion. Expansion is about creating space for new possibilities and experiences. Expansion requires vision. Expansion requires commitment, getting out of your comfort zone, presence, and letting go. And I'm about to wrap up, but I want to say as you move to expand, things are going to get in your way. Things are going to get in your way, meaning (laughs) it's not always going to be easy. And I'd invite you after we're done to allow yourself some time to just pause and make a list of the things that may get in your way. Think internally or self, what things may get in your way. Think externally, what people, what circumstances may get in your way. With that, I'll share a quote by Winston Churchill. When there is no enemy within, the enemies outside cannot hurt you. This week, I pray that you will give yourself permission to explore and become certain about your vision about the vision for your life. I pray that you will remain committed to your commitment. Leave your comfort zone and practice being present as well as letting go every single day. And as I close, I want to remind you that in this life, we get to choose. So choose to listen from the place where your heart speaks and choose to live a sensational life. Peace and blessings. Thank you for listening to Where Her Heart Speaks with Coach Catherine, where Catherine aims to challenge and disrupt ineffective thoughts and behaviors to help you not only embody peace joy, calm, and certainty, but also help you live the life you've always dreamed of living. Follow Catherine on Facebook and Instagram at I am Catherine James and visit www.catherinejames.com. Remember to live the life of your dreams. You must go within and return to the place where your heart speaks.